As daybreak arrives over the Australian city of Brisbane, its people have been warned to expect scenes they would never have imagined just days ago. Entire districts flooded by torrents of rainwater and many of the residents who didn't leave are left sheltering in emergency rescue centres. Across the state of Queensland, at least 22 people have died and more than 40 are missing. Our foreign affairs correspondent Jonathan Miller has spent the day in Australia's third largest city, Brisbane, where local people have been stunned by the sheer scale of the crisis. The skyscrapers are now being surrounded by water. The city right now is shut down, power's been cut off, and uh, this is like a disaster movie come true for Brisbane. And so the disaster movie that opened with the inland killer tsunami out west two days ago became a riverine urban apocalypse today, as this, the flood of the century, smashed its way through Australia's third biggest city. As we go to air tonight, the Sunshine State's super flood will have just reached its peak. The churning torrents of the filthy, coffee-coloured Brisbane River will have drowned many more suburban homes, forcing thousands to flee. Businesses abandoned. People's livelihoods, people's dreams swept away down the river. Flood flotsam and jetsam here, rather different from the detritus you might see in third world disasters, but there is something shocking and vaguely surreal about seeing a natural disaster like this unfold in the rich world. Australia's better at coping, but all marvel in horror at the sheer power of the river. All day long, the Brisbane River has been rising inexorably and breaching its banks. Down there, in the CBD, Riverside properties are already being flooded, and across the city, 30 suburbs now are underwater. That's 20,000 homes. And it's still many hours to go before this flood reaches its peak. We're at one of several big evacuation centres. Yesterday afternoon, they only had one family here. Hundreds have filed in today, though, and they'll keep on coming tonight. You can't help noticing that these are Brisbane's urban poor, the disadvantaged, the ethnic minorities. Gary, a single dad, has just arrived with his two preschool children. The police come around and give us evacuation orders and they told us to move out. They did and they said no one's allowed to stay. We've got nothing to go back to when we go back there, so it's, like it's gone. So, but we'll, we, we'll, we'll be all right. G'day. Hi. Australia's British-born Prime Minister came to the centre. She's expressed shock at what she called the mind-boggling dimensions of this disaster. She said she was deeply concerned about the impact on jobs. Queensland has already faced some dark days and there are dark days still ahead. But Australia is standing with you, working with Queensland to help Queensland through this crisis. The emergency services are stretched but coping, yet the deluge and the flood surge, which followed 10 years of drought, have reignited debate in this, the driest inhabited continent on the planet, about Australia's apparent vulnerability to extreme weather events. This afternoon, we drove through the eerily quiet city centre to some of the nearby submerged suburbs. This is low-lying, largely middle-class Milton, where we found homes abandoned to rising waters. I'm very, very anxious. I've um, been watching the flood levels rise, helped the neighbours over the road and next door move things out yesterday, last night. And um, just looking at the forecast every hour and seeing what's been updated. And it's still coming up. It's still it's... coming up. So they're saying hopefully one more metre, in which case under, downstairs will be flooded, but upstairs should be OK. And just have to hope the forecasts are right. Just down the road, it was even worse. Closer to the river, the water deeper. Across the city, hundreds of businesses have been flooded out. We're in the Brisbane suburb of Rosalie. It's only about two miles or so from the city centre, and it's now about to get dark. You can see that as the river has risen during the day, it's now up to about the first storey level of some of these shops and houses behind me. Many have been submerged in this neighbourhood, police are saying, and it is still nine hours to go until this river reaches its peak, during which time, the water is expected to rise at least another metre. It's going to be a very long and anxious night for local residents. After dark, we returned to the evacuation centre we'd visited earlier. It was predictably busier. 
Rescue workers admit they've been taken by surprise by having to mobilize for disaster relief operations in their own backyard. It really is a strange land, Australia, but what it does show is no continent is really immune from disasters. And the one thing about disasters, they are surprising. You think you know a disaster until it occurs. I mean, we thought we knew there was going to be a big flood in Queensland. Now it's actually turned into a catastrophe. As you watch this, the flood will have peaked. The Queensland Premier today told Brisbane residents to prepare to wake up to shocking scenes of widespread devastation on Thursday. Jonathan Miller, Channel 4 News, Brisbane. And later in the programme, our science correspondent Julian Rush analyses the cause of Brisbane's worst flooding for decades. And you can see a flood map plus one man's diary of the disaster in Queensland. It's all on our website, channel4.com forward slash news.